But how many know that when you have a purpose and a calling on your life, there's nothing that nobody, nobody, and nothing can happen. I am Angela C. Wright. Your numbers has shrunk. He said, I don't know how, why. You're not going to get You're going to have to have mounds of security for me because you're not going to get me. If I wasn't depressed and going through what I was going through, I probably would have never started. And this episode was brought to you by the Ayers Agency, a full service marketing firm noted in entertainment and culture. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another great episode of Break Free Podcast with your girl, Free. And today we have another dope episode, guys. You're going to be so inspired. And I believe you're going to walk away with courage to be able to speak about anything and know that all things are possible with God. Y'all help me welcome Chanel. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for coming by today. Thank you for being willing to open up with your testimony and to talk to us about what you've had to endure because it's coming up on a year or has yes, it already, it's coming Monday. up on a, Monday will March be a year. March the 4th, yes ma'am. So, um, almost like the anniversary. So, yes. I, I thank you because I can I couldn't imagine. Yeah, so, just thank you so much for coming. And girl, you do not have to say ma'am to me. <laughs> now, I know I'm a little up, up in age, but baby, we ain't gonna Stop do that. It. Don't yes, do I that. Got, <laughs> listen, I gotta respect my elders as my grandma always told me. <laughs> nah, we ain't yeah, doing that. Yes, <laughs> so, let's just go back to approximately a year ago. You allowed Nay to go to a party. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So on March the 4th of 2023, um, Ajane and I was working. I do have a food truck here um, in the metro Atlanta area. Oh, tell us the name of the food truck. Uh, the name of the food truck is Philly Creations. Mm -hmm. um, so I brought PA to the A. Okay. I do Philly cheesesteak, hand cut french fries, um, water ice, pretzels, wings. Name it, I do. And it, do you have the truck all over Atlanta, or is it yes. just out in Douglasville area? No, I be all over. I be in Florida, Texas. I be all over. Okay. But it, I have been shut due to the death of my daughter. Okay. So I kind of been shut for almost a year. Mm -hmm. So hopefully praying that I will be up and out for 2024, coming and rolling in. Well, we'll pray God give yes. you strength. So on um, March the 4th of 2023, Ajane and I, we worked um, on the food trailer that day. Um, she had asked me to go to a party, and I said, you could go, because we've been in the house, we've been working. So she, I was like, first I asked her, how far is it? Because mm -hmm. me, I'm old, I got to go to sleep, I need a nap, you know. Yeah. So she was like, Mom, it's only 20 minutes away. I said, okay. So fast forward, we got off. Um, she went in the house. Her friends was waiting for her at the house. Um, they got dressed. I took them to the party. So you seen like it was, you seen the place and you knew like you felt comfortable. I felt with her. comfortable. I didn't have no gut feeling, nothing. Like the party was about to be lit. Mm -hmm. Like I sat outside, I watched the girls out there. They looked cute. The guys, they was out there. They mm -hmm. was flicking it up. Yeah. You know, so I went on. She said, mom, text me when you get home. I said, okay. I said, well, you're out here partying. Enjoy. She was like, no, but this text me. Let me know that you got home. I said, okay, I will. Because y'all had a close relationship. Yes. Yeah. Our relationship is like this. She could open my iPhone with her face recognition. Yeah. So I said, okay. I text her at 1031 p.m. I said, home. I didn't get a response, which I knew I wasn't going to get a response because I knew she was out enjoying herself. Right. I came and cut my shower on. Because I went straight and dropped her off. I didn't even shower. I just, because it was getting late. Mm -hmm. So I live about 25 minutes from where the party was and 25 minutes back. So I cut the shower. I'm about to plug my phone up into the charger. My shower running. I put something on Instagram in my story. I went to go put my phone down. Her friend is calling me along with my oldest daughter. My oldest daughter is still in Philadelphia because that's where I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I moved here eight years ago. Okay. So at that time, I said, why is Ajane friend calling me? I said, maybe Nene lost her phone. Let me answer for my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. I said, hello? She crying. Nene got shot. I hung up. So I'm talking to Titi, which is her friend. Mm -hmm. And I just kept saying, don't move her. Don't move her. I'm coming. Don't move her. Turned the shower off. But TT's not responding back to me. I'm, she's just not responding. So I'm like, don't move her, don't move her. So a lady got on the phone. 
And she asked me my name, my daughter's name, how far are you? I said, hey, y'all, I live deep in Douglasville, like 25 minutes. But by then, I'm on two wheels. Yeah. Fast forward, I got to the Target on Chapel Hill. What was going through your head as you was heading there? I'm going to really be honest. I did not picture my daughter deceased. I just thought that she got shot in the leg or the arm or something. I did not picture her being deceased. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, um, the lady basically told me, when I asked her that last time, how was Ajane, how was AJ? She said, Miss White, your daughter didn't make it. Mm. I almost caused two accidents, but all I could do was honk the horn and say that I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm on one wheel now, so Chapel Hill, I don't know if y'all been up that way, but Chapel Hill is nothing but curves. Yeah. It's curves. Like, I almost slid my truck over, mm -hmm. but I didn't by the grace of God. So I'm going through, going through. I'm still honking. So I come in through the development, trying to remember where I dropped her off at because she was using her GPS and for us to get there because my, my phone was almost dead. Mm -hmm. I see the cops. I see, no, this is not it. But I'm crying. I, I couldn't really think. I already had parked my car and turned the hazards on. I said, no, this is not it. So I went down one more, and it was right there. I, I hopped the um, sidewalk, locked my door, and I'm running. I broke through everything, and you just hear the cops saying, no, if y'all run, y'all going to get locked up. It had to be over 100 kids out there. Mm. I got down to the bottom, and you see the caution tape, but I still didn't think that that was my daughter that was laying in the street. Right. And I got up to talk to the cop, but mind you, the lady that was talking to me, she's still on the phone with me. She never, ever hung up. And so I got to the bottom to where my daughter was. And when I got there, they wouldn't let me, you know, let me cross because of the crime scene. But I did see her. Um, and I'm forever grateful when I did get there that my daughter was covered. My daughter didn't make social media, her body, nothing. Like, they cover her. So I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah. Yes. Forever grateful. And had you ever allowed her to go to a party before? I have. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, they're at that age, even though... These kids are honestly out of pocket. Mm -hmm. But as an adult that had a child, my first daughter at 14, and I lived the life, you can't, is you only could do but so much. You have right, to let them shelter. live it right. Yeah. But one thing or two things for certain, she know how to check in, mm -hmm. and I have a location. So in the parties, it's not like they was coming down here to Atlanta. They was up in Douglasville where I dropped them off five and, minutes and from the house. And the parents was at the house, right? Correct. Right, yeah. It wasn't just like a wow party. If I'm not mistaken, it was like somebody's, one of their friends that go to school with them, birthday or something birthday, like that. Birthday, sweet 16. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so you had, you was thinking it'll be okay. Correct. Yeah. Because I done had parties at my house. Never, you know, things happen, mm -hmm. but, you know, I never experienced this. Right. And how did you move on, like, that day standing there in front of the caution tape and knowing, like, Nay was laying there? Like, what was going through your head? How, how, how was you able to even take your next breath, really? I couldn't. Like, I can't even really take it now. Mm -hmm. We was together that day. That's all I keep replaying. Like, I just – and she wasn't even at the party for one hour. Like, she – she wasn't even at the party for one hour. So it's like by the time she got in, it was time for her to exit. Were you angry with God? No. No? No. You know why? Because in this process, in life, we all must pass no. away. We mm -hmm. all must go. Mm -hmm. Is how we're going to go. We never want to know how we are going to go. And I just never pictured my daughter being shot. I know we're going to leave. And I know that she was supposed to bury me. And it didn't happen that way. You're really strong. Thank you. Yeah, you're super strong. Thank you. Yeah, because most people um, that I know that I've talked to, mm -hmm. that have experienced, are angry. You know, angry, angry with God, angry with the, the, the person who did it. You know, just angry. Am I angry at the the people that did it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm not angry at God because I know 
we must go down that road. Yeah. Yes. But am I angry at the people that came from another county to another county to another county to another county to get where you had the crime at? Did they end up catching them? Absolutely. And they were all young? All young. 17, 17, which is twins. Um, the other guy's 18, 18, and the oldest was 21. They're all going to be charged as adults, though. Absolutely. Yeah, they'll all be charged as adults. Absolutely. And and what would you like to see happen to them? Justice. You don't need to see the street. For what? But you don't wish, like, the death penalty. You just want them to go to jail. Or do I you wish the death that. penalty? <laughs> the death penalty. However, in this case, by it being a massive shooting, um, this case is not eligible for that. But you would want it? Yeah, you feel like a life for a life. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Why would I? <laughs> mm -hmm. My daughter was only fourteen. She was just starting to live her life. She wanted to. She wanted to do hair. She wanted to. She. She. She needed to be out here. Do you? How do you advocate now for for Nay? Like, what do you do? I know you're here today telling your story. Do you? So um, right now I am trying to open up a nonprofit. I did it. Um, I did my stuff online for her already. In five hundred one c three. Yeah. So I have to go through the IRS now with that. But I did um, the, the state of Georgia. Okay. Um, I have a, a girlfriend that lives in um, in Douglasville. She have a five hundred one c three. So now I'm going to be advocating, talking to the young people out there. Um, you know. So this is a little bit of any everything for okay. right now. What is your message to the young people? Um, the message to the young people is to put the guns down, period. And with the no snitching, I'm not with that. I guess because I'm I'm from old school, but I just feel as though if you did the crime, you need to do the time. And if you hanging around with people that you don't need to hang around with, get up out of there. So you feel like people should you feel like people should tell? Yeah, why not? Because if the sh if the shoe was on the other foot, you would want them to tell. Here you go. Yeah, you would want them to tell. But Absolutely. I went to prison. I didn't tell. Okay. Yeah. But I, ten but, I, down, I but I understand, and it wasn't nobody's life was taken though. I okay, understand got whole. You. I understand wholeheartedly what okay. you're saying. You say I understand. You want them to take accountability. Absolutely. And to understand, like somebody's life was taken, whether they meant to do it or whether they didn't mean to do it. Y'all still were shooting and should not have been out there shooting in such an open space. Agreed. But it was not just one. It was two kids is deceased. So it's two kids and um, eight that got injured. And the, I know the bullet wasn't meant for Nay, but the other person, were they trying to kill the other person? No, the little boy that got, that, just, that is deceased was not, he didn't have anything to do with it either. It was just, they were just innocent bystanders. And I tried to ask myself, where have we went wrong with this generation? Because I, they're so angry. They're, so, they're angry and, and, and they're a bunch of cowards. We used to fight. We did. And we used to have our homegirls, our homeboys. We used to wait on the bus. We won't wait for you. We won't wait for you in school. The hallways, it is what it is. But now, everybody had to pick up a gun. Everything is gun, 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 gun. And people will travel to go get a gun and don't even know how to work it. And I think gun laws aren't making it any better. No, absolutely not. Yeah, I think gun laws aren't making it any better. No. I also feel like that the, the generation, they don't understand. They would love for us to be erased. Yes. From history, from the face of the earth. So as yes. many as uh, black on black crime can happen, they're okay with it, yes, you know, agreed. but they can't see that because I always, too, try to put myself in the mindset of a child of when I was a teenager and when I was coming up. Yes, and I remember it was stuff people couldn't tell me. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never been with, I'm not setting nobody up to give up. I'm not doing anything like that, but it was times I was hard-headed, too, you know, so I know it is kind of hard to get, get through to kids, but I think with you going to the school and you talking about Nay and talking about what happened, I think it will resonate, if not with all, with some. Yes, yeah. I, I definitely agree. And we're um, they're doing a walk in Douglasville um, on Saturday um, because another little young boy got killed in 2022. 
and I think it's his birthday. So I'm going to do the walk with them on um, Saturday. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good to be. And yeah. have you like reached out to like the community leaders and stuff in Douglasville? No, no. I'm not ready for that. You're not. I would have never guessed that. I'm not because ready. you just seem so sitting here in this moment. You're so peaceful. I am. However, um, the pain that I adore is not okay. It's not, I'm not going to say that it's not okay, but I'm grieving and I haven't really started my grieving process yet. Mm. Will I talk to the officials in Douglas County? Mm. I will, but I'm just going to wait till trial is over because I already been in the news and when this first happened. So I just, I just really want to lay low. Have you thought about therapy? Um, you my therapy. I am. Right now. Aww. And I'm going to be honest, and it's funny because my two boys go. So, Ajene was a twin. Mm -hmm. So, she have a twin brother, and then I have an 11-year-old. And I took the 11-year-old this morning, and he was like, Chanel, when you going to come in here and sit on my chair? And I said, <laughs> and I'm not. And he's like, well, you know, you always invite. I said, I know, but I'm going to be talking to people out in the street. I'm talking to my homegirls or call somebody. Somebody going to listen to me, but I don't think I'm going to be able to come talk to you. He's like, okay, I understand. So, yeah, you're my therapist right now. Well, you know, anytime you could get my number from Bob, and anytime you feel like you just want to have a conversation or if you just want to call and yell, cuss, scream, whatever you choose to do, okay. like I'm here for you, and I mean that, you know? Right. I mean that wholeheartedly. But, I mean, I feel like sitting here, though, Chanel, I promise your spirit just – seems so calm now on the inside i can't say what you're dealing with on the inside but just sitting here feeling feeling your energy like feeling your spirit it's just that god has given you god has given you peace he has yeah and life for me right now have been life in you hear me like really life in <laughs> you don't even know <laughs> the 11 year old epilepsy now he just been having seizures out the blue mm -hmm. uh, this was in a car accident like three weeks ago so what I mean, life, life is life, but I'm here. And With I'm a smile grateful. like that. Yes, I'm grateful for sure. I'm grateful. Skin ain't broke out. Cause you know, man, when I get <laughs> stressed, no, for real. When, when stress comes, stress will begin to tear your body down and people don't really realize that. Yes. And mine's are showing my face and my skin. Like your skin is just as clear as day. It is. Well, thank you, baby. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. You, thank yeah. You, God has given you grace. Yes. Yeah. Well, God has given, given you. to me, baby. I just pray and that's it yeah are you actively involved in church or no or yeah. you just kind of shut down like from everything no i'm muslim oh okay 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 yes, so you've been going to the mosque or no no ma'am no you just been like secluded i be in the house i do more homebound than anything i don't even really go out now when nene was here I did used to go out maybe like two, two, three times out the month, but now it's just shut down. So what do you do throughout your day? Like to help I have you? a lot to do. The business, mm -hmm. crying, trying to connect, washing clothes, cleaning. I keep busy though. I really do keep busy. Um, yeah, I do have my days where I just like kind of like shut, shut down, down. Mm -hmm. but it's not really healthy. For me, one, cause I got high blood pressure. Um, so I try to keep that in mind and I know that I still have to live and I have to live for other things. And I know that Nene want me to party. She don't want me to be sad. She want me to be out here getting some, some money. You heard me? Well, how she used so to be like, what was her personality? got to go get these money on. Okay, <laughs> come on, girl. That was my two. I, I miss her. Like, if I say Nene, we got to work. She's like, well, how, where is it at? Because the traveling time is the longest, you mm -hmm. know? But when we get there, it's up and popping. She might have a little attitude, but maybe yeah. she she gonna get she to right that money. On the like, side. come on. Well, yes. she said we gotta get to the money. Get to these money, eyes, mom. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So she had like a fun, loving she personality. Yes, TikTok, love to dance. Mm -hmm. Um, she was all that. And what do you miss most about Nay? Everything. Her calling me, texting me in school. Mom, can you send me a dollar? Can you send me two dollars? I need a drink. <laughs> oh, I need this. Oh, I don't feel good. Can I stay home? Oh. Come get me in the office. She got a girlfriend, TT, the one I was just telling you about. Yeah. Them two in the office. The principal called, and you could come get them. Okay, so I miss everything. And how how is TT now? Have you TT is okay. She just came around. Actually, Eileen was just around there. Um, that we live like really around the corner, but she's okay. She's she's trying to heal. 
Because I can imagine that was hard for her too yes. to be there and to see it. And then mm-hmm. this is her best friend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 And it was another little girl, her best friend went with her too. So it was actually two girls out there. Mm-hmm. Her friends. Yep. My my friend daughter goes to school in Douglasville. My okay. friend Lainey's daughter and her um her daughter Shania. She was there. She was Shalaya. Mm-hmm. Shalaya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep, she was there also. Yeah. And um it just was tragic. I remember like seeing it on the news and everything and I just was thinking like these kids have no idea. They have no idea what they be doing with these guns and over and I bet you they don't even know what they were shooting for. Well, from my understanding it's gang related. Um so trial is slowly approaching mm-hmm. and we will see. And how are you preparing yourself mentally for trial? I'm ready. And I'm going to tell you why I'm ready, because I I need the closure. Like, I wasn't able to identify her when I got there. I had to identify her verbally. So I could not, even though she was there on the ground, they would not allow me to come over. So they they made me give me, I had to give them my ID. They looked there to, you know, roll all my information down. And they was like, well, who is she? I said, that was my daughter. They asked me her date of birth and full name, and that was it. So I was, I don't, I know what she had on that day because she did TikToks right before she left. And I walked, you know, I seen her, but I don't know what she was looking like under it. So they wouldn't let me come across. However, I was going to go across, but I said, Chanel, do you want to go to jail or be exit from the situation? Or are you just going to go sit underneath this tree? And I went and sat underneath that tree. But it was probably best so you would not have had that last picture in your mind. You know, it was probably, you feel like it wasn't? I needed to see her for my closure. So Mm -hmm. just like now, trial Mm -hmm. is coming up. I need to see what happened from the beginning to the end so I could have the closure for me so I could start healing. As long as, honestly, this case is open and is ongoing, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have closure. I may not start grieving at that point, but I need some type of closure for me. I understand. I I need to know in your brains, what was y'all thinking, what happened, like, why did y'all come to Douglas County? Y'all came over here from Lithonia. I, I need some answers. They came from Lithonia, so they're I not even city ins- kids. These are suburb yes, kids. I need some answers. No, they from all over. Mm-hmm. But I still need some answers. And this episode was brought to you by The Heirs Agency, a full-service marketing firm noted in entertainment and culture. Chanel, so what do you think about like the state, do you feel like that there's more that the schools can do about gun violence? Do you feel like it's anything that schools can do to educate kids? Well, in my opinion, mm-hmm. no. no. Why is because I believe that the schools and the schools is teaching them, but it is our children's actions. We could, Even as a parent, as a teacher, we could teach our children, any and everything, but it's up to them to basically execute it. So do you feel like it's not enough that parents are doing? No, or you just feel no, like what it's I solely really up believe, to the kids? believe, honestly, social media is raising our children. I don't care if we take the phones, take the computers, take the iPad, take whatever. Social media is raising our children. I spoke to someone recently too, and they were saying that the video games is the videos games have a as lot well. has yeah. a lot to do with it. It's the video games and social media because on social media, what you doing? You scrolling up and down, you liking the pictures, you screenshot, and you gonna go sell your homie or your home girl. Oh well, they seen a gun, or he out here or she out here hustling, or whatever the case may be. But it's definitely social media. In in an ideal world, what would you like to see happen? All the guns off the street. For real. If nothing else, all the guns off the street. Illegal or just period? Period. All guns. All guns. I think that fighting, 
needs to be brought back in. Yeah. Yes. And, and neighborhood community. What was that? Like the neighborhood watch? Remember? Like yes, the neighborhood watch? I remember. Watch? It. Yes. Yeah, the yes. neighborhood watch. And, yes. And, yes. Um, yes. And, and I think, too, there was a time that whether it was my child or if it was your child, if it was out of pocket, I'm saying something to your child, and then I'm going to tell you about it later. Yeah. Right? Correct. But then it got to a place where nobody wants anybody saying anything to their child that is to correct. correct them. That is correct. Which is a, a place that I feel like we went wrong, too, as a generation. We did. But I'm still that type of parent. Even my neighbors, if I leave it, check them, and I'm going to still check them. I'm still with that old school. These parents, this generation, is a no-go. You can't say nothing to the child. The mom or the dad want to get very rude. They want to fight. No, they need. We need old school back, and I think that this world would really be in a better place. Yeah, I totally agree. I remember yeah. when I was teaching school, like um, uh, one of the kids, mom. I can't even remember what he got in trouble for. But first of all, I'm not gonna mistreat anybody's child because I don't want nobody mistreating mine. That's right. And if I'm telling your child something, I'm telling them for the good. I'm not doing it to harm them or embarrass them. That is correct. Baby, she came up there like she thought she was going to get some straightening. <laughs> what she did not know was, baby, I'm half hood, half holy, okay? Okay? Don't okay. let Miss Wright, don't let don't let the shoes and look so fool you. Okay. All right? Yes, yeah, I had to tell yes. her, you know, I'm not going to do no harm to your child. I'm only telling your child what's right because if not, it's two ways. Dad are in jail. Yeah, that's it. And if they can't listen at this age, they're not going to listen when they get older. That is correct, for sure. Yeah. I, I agree. How yes. are your other children? How are they handling it? Um, They don't. So Amai, which is the twin, he don't really honestly talk. Um, Like I asked him like a month ago, hey, do you cry? No, I'm a G. Okay, boy, like, go ahead. But I know you be crying in the shower because I cry too. No, I don't, I don't be crying. Okay. I said, well, don't you remember you met Nene before me? Y'all was in the room together. Yeah, but you trip. That's what he said. Oh, you trip. And I said, okay, that's what I mean. Okay, boy, whatever. But you cry. But he's in therapy as well. So both oh, of the boys good. are, yeah, both of the boys are in therapy. Aileen, he's taking it very, very hard. Him and that's Nene. That's the youngest. That's the 11-year-old, yes. Um, they was very close. They was she very, was like very the close. big sister. Yes, yes, yes. So they're okay for right now. But I do have both of them in counseling. And what about your oldest daughter? She's in Philadelphia. Um, She does counseling in Philly. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So even if... The twin is not opening up to you. Hopefully, he's opening up to the to the therapist. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm praying that he is. Yeah, because, yeah. like you said, that's that's his twin. Yeah. You know, they they was in the womb together, together, and then for not to be here, and then they all lived in a household together. You know, it's just it's different. I can't ima- I can't imagine, but I know it's different for him. Yeah, you know what? And I'm gonna ask him soon when I go home. I never really asked him now that me and you were speaking, like because he was he wanted to go that night. And he got in the car, him and his friend. And I said, oh, you're not going. He was like, wow, well, you know, y'all, Nene go every time I go out, which she do. So if she goes to a party, I let both of them go, usually. But this one particular night, I never, I didn't let him go. But I never asked him, now that I'm talking to you, I'm going to ask him, how do he feel? Like, do he feel, like, guilty that he didn't go? Or is he mad at me? Or oh, not allowing him to go, and I'm a, uh, and I'm I'm gonna see what he say. And you I never did, you asked never thought him, about that. You never no know, into now. I never, I never said to think about it. Do you know why you wouldn't let him go and you let Nay go? <sighs> because Amaya um, had just came in the house like right before we um got in the house and I ain't felt like all this. I might need to stay home with me even though I was probably going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I needed another oldest child in the house with me. So I saw him he didn't need to go. And I think she was I just said let the girls go. Like let them hang out. I said you'll have your weekend where I'm not gonna allow Nene and her friends to go. And he had slammed my door and I pulled off. You didn't care that he slammed the no. door. But I wanted to subcon like what was it that made you stay made him stay that night? Because you never know how that could have went if he was there. I think about it. I thought about it. I thought about it. And I asked him, you know, I did ask him, if y'all was at that party, do you think that you and Nene would have been close together? And he said, yeah. Right. And then you never know. if Because he said every time 
they go to parties, he said, they always stand next to each other or somebody might be standing here, but he could see her. And yeah, and you just never know. He, you know, if a bullet hit his sister, he might would have been on them boy, you know, on them boys because mm-hmm. that's his sister. sister. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but make sure you just check on him from time to time. I'm going to ask yeah. him when I get home. I'm going to ask him. To see if he has survivor's guilt or, or how does it affect him, yep. you know. Mm-hmm. But maybe you can't say affect him because he's going to be like, I'm tough, I'm a G, <laughs> you know. But maybe you can ask him in a way. You know how to speak yeah. his language yeah. because I'm you're his ask mother. Him. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to ask him. I'm, yeah. I am. I'm going to ask him. But I do know when he's hurting and when he's thinking about Nene because he played the type of songs and the songs that she used to listen to and stuff like that. So I know when he trying to get his emotional bag because he started playing that type of music. So Is it different in the house without Nene being there? Quiet. You hear me? I ain't going to lie. Nene had that emotion, baby. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> Nene had that emotion coming in, honey. Yeah. The, the block is dead. Like she was the life of the party. She was the life of the party of everything. Friends, just even if they in my house, nobody even they will still text and call, but it's dead. So different without her being there. Mm-hmm. How that 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 next morning? How did you get out of bed? So I didn't get into the bed. So when I came home from the scene, mm-hmm. it was nowhere for me to park. I didn't even make the announcement. I only made two phone calls that night. Mm -hmm. But when I got back to my house, it was nowhere for me to sit, nothing. I went to bed at 6, and I think I was back up like 7.30. And I was on the go that whole, like, whole week. She passed on the um, Saturday. Her service and everything was planned out Monday by 12 p.m. You planned it out that quick? It was that quick. All I was was waiting for them to release her body from GBI. Dress, I bought Tuesday, shoes, everything. Everything, I just was waiting. So it was kind of like a waiting game. Mm-hmm. Because and they I, still didn't let you go identify her body after? I didn't see my baby until that Thursday when they released her at 7 a.m. So they had her body from that Sunday because she was out on the street that whole time. My daughter didn't get picked up until Sunday morning. What? Mid morning. My daughter was outside the whole time. Doug- Douglasville never ever had a massive shooting. They never ever. Oh, so they didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. They they this was the biggest shooting they ever ever had. And my daughter laid ten forty one p.m. So Sunday, I'm going to say maybe 10.30 a.m. Because they call, I was on my way back to the scene because mm-hmm. I ain't hear from nobody. So I need to know what's going on. And when I got to the Target, they Again, called. The target. <laughs> and it was the corner. And they said, hey, we're, on our way. we're in front of your door. You're in front of who door? Because I'm not at home. And I knew my daughter was in that, in that, um, in that van. I knew she was in there. Did they say why she had, what, but was it part of the investigation? Due to an investigation, they couldn't move her. Mm. They had to call so many more detectives out for this case. This is a very, very large case. But I'm thankful that they do have the people. That, yes, that's the sheriff's office, Douglas County, hands down. Y'all did a good job. They did a good job. Because we know some of these shoes that have that has happened within the last year and even up until recent, they don't even have the people or even know who That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm grateful. Even though I'm grieving and I'm hurt, I'm grateful for a lot of things. So yeah. Yeah, God has you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, he has you. And the kids, you know, the kids. I know I know the twin try to be strong for you. Yeah, he yeah. don't like, neither one of them like me to cry. So, honestly, when I cry, I have to cry not around them. So, like, if I'm washing the dishes or something and I might start playing her music and I just 
I have to cry like I can't sniff or nothing because they yeah. they don't like it. So I'll, I just if he ain't looking, if he playing the game too, I'll just like run in my bathroom and cry, or I'll just like chalk it and just cry in the shower. But I know not to cry in front of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then that that day after the funeral, how was it for you when you woke up that morning? I don't know. I really can't remember. I can't remember. It was just so much stuff um, happening. Um, I, I can't remember. I just remember the phone call, then that Sunday, and Monday, I planned the whole service. I, then I went to the mall on Tuesday to get the outfit. That's all I remember kind of after that. Just and then the obituary, that's, that's it. I don't really remember but I do remember that Friday because it was the day before helped to get dressed nails hair everything so I was there basically for everything oh you was there while they was getting a dress and everything everything, baby. everything. down to them digging the ground up putting her tombstone down I've been hands on with everything long live me long live me the death of me, baby. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, what's next for you? So, for 2024, um, moving forward, it's definitely going to be a struggle right now. You know, trial is coming up. Um, they did say that it's a possible day it could last for a month. So, um, but moving forward, um, I'm praying that I could get a storefront for Fully Creations, you know. Okay. And get some sponsors out here, something, you okay, know. Okay, okay. I, I need to get up at the storefronts, and that's really it. I just really want, that. that's my main focus right now, to really get into a storefront. I love my food truck, and I love all my customers, but now I really want to get into the storefront now where I can hire people, and I really want to step back. I, I I got a lot of stuff that I got going on. I want to do finane, you know, I want to open up a building, let people come and do their TikTok. I got so much stuff that I want to do. Right. Um, so I'm, I want to really step back from the business once I get the storefront up and running and move forward. Which side of town would you want for the creations in? I want to go to like an Alpharetta. Up, really? Up in that place, yes. And does the, um, you have cheese fries? I love cheese fries. I got cheese fries. Ooh, I love cheese fries. fries. So the reason why I said like up in that area, it don't have to be Alpharetta. It could be Sandy Springs. Um, they don't really have anything up there. Right. Like like finger food. So my my truck is like considered uh, finger food. Mm-hmm. So they don't have nothing up in those areas. Now the hood, we do. Yeah. But I need where they going to spend them bucks, baby. <laughs> the money on. The money on. Yes, I need the money on. I need to go further up. Yeah, mm-hmm. so maybe you know, like when you start doing things with the nonprofit, you can inc- incorporate Philly yes. Creations. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yep. that's yeah. my plan. Yeah, and you know, holla at Bob when he has something going on. And I am. Yeah, he's you know, a busy man, though. You, you know, know, he's connected. I know. He's connected. Well, yeah, know. You know, he try to act like he's not. <laughs> yes. Okay. Long as somebody understand yeah. me, what I was just talking about. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. So before you go, I have to ask you this. Yes. Tell me something that you feel like you need to break free from. Um. These kids. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I need a break from these kids. Yes. But honestly, really nothing. Like life really been good to me before this situation right um and it's gonna be good to me afterwards you know I just gotta remain strong talk I do a lot of talking and sometimes I do shut down so when Bobby said that I want a couple of the podcasts like I was so hyped you, you hear were? Me? yes because listen so me and my homegirl was talking about I said you I think I need to get a podcast and she was like why I said girl because I like to talk I need to be in people business <laughs> you know what I'm saying and I said you know I'm real and raw and she was like girl you need to go for it and I was like all right and then that's how I was here 
Oh, wow. I know he just told me. He's like, man, my homegirl, she going to come through. She lost her daughter. And then when he was saying that, I remember my friend daughter, like my niece, I remember her talking about it or whatever. So I'm glad you came. Did you yes, enjoy yourself? Did. did you like it? This is comfortable, baby. I'm yeah. going to have to get me one of these, baby. Watch. This is my child. It's going to be called Hood Something Podcast. <laughs> okay. It's going to be Hood something. Chronicles. Hood oh, Chronicles. Yes. Something. Yeah, well, yes. I wish you well. Go for yes, it. Yeah, I go am. for it. I and am. like I said, if it's anything I could do for you, I'm here for you. Uh, mm-hmm. Get my number from Bob. Whatever. If it's anything okay. that, uh, anything, anything you mm-hmm. have, and if you, you have something you want me to come out, whatever, whatever. Whatever it is that I can I can help you do, and I'm praying your strength coming up next week yes, for a trial. And um, you know, vengeance is not ours. Um, yeah, um, vengeance is not ours. But God sees, He hears, and He knows. Yes, He does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. He does. It's a, he does. It's gonna it's gonna get better. Yeah, it it's will get better. Yeah, but does. in those moments when you feel like you're shutting down, reach out to somebody because you don't need to get into that place of shutting down. You know, and then yeah. it caused you to bury yourself in whatever mold you're in at that moment. That is correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Thank all right. Thanks again me. for coming by. Yes, I hope to see you guys again. Thank you. You will. <laughs> okay, y'all. Well, there you have it. Um, I ask that everybody make sure that you support. What's your Instagram or your social media? Um, For Philly Creations, the business is Philly Creations 2018 on IG. My personal is underscore Chanel24. Follow me. Yeah, follow her, support the business, and when y'all see the nonprofit, make a donation, buy a hat, buy a wristlet, buy something to help further her what her purpose and what she's doing for her daughter. Remember, it's always delusion until they see it happen. I'll see you next time. Yes. And this episode was brought to you by the Ayers Agency, a full-service marketing firm noted in entertainment and culture. 